the end of the Machanum Valley, I would say. So I grew up on about halfway point in uh, the Oakville Mills Houtsdale area. Still live up that way. Went to Phillipsburg. Don't hold that against me. Glendale in the valley. Uh, anyhow, so, um, uh, you know, I, I've met some of you along the way so far, or talked to you on the phone, maybe. Um, and uh, you know, it's been a real privilege to serve all this time, or maybe I met you at the township meeting. You know, first time, but uh, you know, so um, uh, it's been a real privilege to serve in this position, and um, you know, I really enjoy it. I feel like we're making a difference, even though it's, at times it's frustrating in Harrisburg uh, trying to get stuff accomplished. Uh, it's so partisan, and that's not unilateral one way or the other. It's just so stupid at times. But um, you know, you can't even get a bridge bill named. You know, like we did these bridge bills where we have fallen veterans over time. Like we did a bunch this year in Coldport. We had a couple of people die in World War II or, or veterans, and they won't even run that for you. It, it's it's just I mean, it's so out of whack. I mean, how ridiculous that is to think about. But it's not like it's anything substantive that's going to change the, you know, whatever, you know. So, but anyhow, so, but, but this morning I just want to, um, uh, you know, talk to you guys and answer any questions. I, Kristen with my, is my staff member back here. Kristen Talley. She's from, uh, up, by the way, she lives in the Brisbane area. Um, she was with, uh, Representative Sankey before me for 10 years. I've known her for 20 years. And yeah, it doesn't look like it's possible, but it is. Uh, so, uh, anyhow, so, um, but yeah, so uh, I'm happy to answer any questions you guys got. Um, and if you guys have individual um, issues you're having, for instance, with driver's license or any state related issue, we're happy to personally address that with the office here coming up. And because um, that's what we're there for is help you guys, the constituent services they call it. And um, you know, so um, anyhow, uh, I'm going to shut up now because no one's to hear me talk like this all I'm on. So I'll turn it over to you guys. If they might have a question to kick it off. Oh, I, I want to also mention that Andrea Barovich is here with Congressman Glenn Thompson's office. Um, he'd be your U.S. representative. Um, so thank you, Andrea, for dropping in. Um, Anyhow, so uh, does anybody have? Oh, thanks to the commit or the uh, supervisors of all for um, here this morning. So, yeah. So, anyhow, so before I shut the cameras off, may I ask a question? Yes, you may. Yeah. The Reverend, how, how do you vote on right to know? And do you believe in the freedom of the press? Yes, I do, and I um so. I haven't got to vote on right to know yet um, in Harrisburg. Um, it hasn't come up. 
is an issue yet. Uh, to, to, to give you an idea how jam packed or jam uh, log jammed it is right now, I think there's been six or seven bills signed into law this year. To put that in perspective, I think we were way over that last session at this point. I mean, that's just how it was like one until April. I mean, just nuts. I mean, but anyhow, so I do support the right to know request, and um, I've We've um, helped people with them filing them because I think it's keeping your government accountable. Uh, I would say that I personally tried to do that as well in this office. Every expense that I have in this office, you all are able to see via right to no request. I do not take per diems. I do the expenses so that you know everything I'm spending money on through this office instead of it being, um, what do you want to say, sort of like a blank thing you just don't know how much I get. So anything I spend, you guys know, I try to keep it that way so that if someone is curious, there's a paper trail, it protects me as well, and and as well I can be held accountable because um, when I ran for this position, I knew it was going to be an open book on me, so it's part of the life and you're, you're stewards of the taxpayer, so I support right to know. And I would also mention that when I worked at the Commonwealth Court before this in Harrisburg, which is like a it's like a statewide appellate court. Um, you're actually going to vote if you vote this fall. You're going to vote for judges to go on that court. But um, anyhow, uh, it's basically like a government appeals court. Don't hold this against me, but I was a lawyer right before this. No one likes those. But um, anyhow, um, uh, but we handled the right to know request on there. Now, obviously, the judge signed off. I was like a lawyer for one of the judges, and they signed off on everything. But uh, I handled the right to know stuff at times on there. That court. Um, Show you opinions that I wrote that would have been supportive of it. So um, obviously it's her opinion though in the end. Um, but uh, I support right to know and the freedom of the press to to um, to hold government accountable. Um, yeah, does that answer the question? Thank you, Representative. And now for the privacy of everyone else, I will be turning the cameras off. Yeah, thank you. I regret that I was not permitted yeah. to do the yeah. Q&A because every question was great and we got to know you. Okay, thanks, Jerry. Uh, let's, go, let's go, one last question here. No? Oh, you have a question too, okay. Oh, okay, wait, hold on. Go ahead, go. since she hasn't asked yet, go ahead. Um, as a pastor in the Moon Valley, yeah. um, I'm concerned about how our country is headed in that direction. It's been said that if you pick up Germany in the 1930s and 40s, pick it up, it matches. Absolutely. Yes. Will you fight for our religious freedom and our religious freedom? Yeah. First Amendment. Yeah. Yeah. But it does not. We're, we're seeing it even in our. You know, um, I, I, I hear it in the Ministerium, but it's not how it goes. Yeah. If it gets to the point where you author a bill and fight for the church. Yeah, I, yeah, I mean, I, I support the right to worship as you wish, uh, whether you're Jewish or Christian or whatever. Um, you know, I believe in religious freedom. Or if you don't want to... Be religious. Don't be religious. Uh, I think the churches should be in the churches, and government should be in there. So, um, yeah, I'm not exactly sure what 100% the issue is specifically going on, if there is. But I support the First Amendment and the right well, there's been religious freedom, free exercise of religion. There has been adverse rumors within the clergy that we could be to the point where we need some. He's submitting our sermons. I'll give you my card. I, you know, I heard that rumor. I, I don't know what's going on yet, but I, I can assure you that if that comes up, I'll, I'll be on your side. So okay. that, that's, that's the church. And if you don't agree with the church, then don't go to the church. It's, it should not be government entanglement. But church. No, I don't support that. I support your right to, you know, go up there and preach whatever sermon you want to preach. I mean, obviously, they're still up there and tell someone they're going to, you know, don't be a radical, you know, Islamic terrorist. No. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's a constitutional right of either free. Free exercise of religion, yeah. Yeah, it's a constitutional right. I agree. No, I, I, if that happens, 
If someone says that, you contact me. I will be on your side. Okay, let's go here and then there, and we'll have to wrap this up. Because we're holding them up. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, there you go. Oh, come on. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 Y
Um, I think the um, conviction rate is like 98 percent going before these courts in DC. Yeah. So um, let, let me. Uh, yeah. I, I want to make sure I try to get this question here. Okay. So first, you said about the mandates and so forth. I'm assuming well, are you referring to COVID and that at all? COVID. There was a lot of mandates coming along, and there still is. Yeah. You so know I, what's I, going on? I want to address this yeah. COVID matter because um, I do see people on Facebook and stuff commenting about mm -hmm. you know do not comply so forth. The rules of the game have changed this time. People are going to lose their jobs. Yeah. You know. yeah, but I will say, we just talked at the beginning of this, we talked about a constitutional amendment. You all Bingo. voted for a constitutional amendment Bingo. Mm -hmm. about a couple years ago when this mm -hmm. happened. It passed 55% or something like that. The rules of the game have changed. And we've already used this one time. It was about the bridge down in Philadelphia. We had a vote to extend that. The first time they did that, a bunch of us voted no because they wanted to extend it for a year of emergency declaration. And we said, uh uh, we're not voting for it. And like, some of the people are like, are you really voting against that bridge? I said, yeah, we're not doing an emergency declaration what, for a year. That's what I appreciate about yeah. you, that you're constitution minded. Yeah, so you know? we voted for three months. And I said, you can get I that know. bridge done in three months. If not, come back to us. And we're paying because for it. we're not doing emergency declarations that long anymore. Well, anyway. And mm. the rules of the game yes. changed. That constitutional amendment yes. said that the governor cannot shut people down for more than, uh, declare an emergency for more than 21 days without legislat legislative approval. But legislation is approving it. it, it not yet. Okay. And last time it would have been stopped if we had this amendment. This The game had changed. They're not happy about that. The Governor Wolf is not happy about that because all of a sudden so we could have ended it. And he said, oh, no, yeah. I need the power to do like, this and so forth. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -uh. Yeah. That's, I think we should vote on that. Yeah. If you think it should be shut down, then you vote for it to be shut down. I'm not. We're not, I'm not shut. I'm not voting to shut down anybody anymore. This is enough. Are there more and more? We our businesses. Small businesses are gone. Right. And yet, right. Nothing against Walmart, Home Depot, but right. somehow they were allowed to open. I mean, the Waltons had to make a pile of money off right. this. So I just want to be very clear about where I stand on the COVID thing. I'm not voting to shut anybody down. Yeah. And if they go to that again, you'll know what side I'm on. So Yeah, it's not uh, just the COVID. Look, I, I had COVID. Mm -hmm. I, I was very sick when I got it. I was down for like two weeks. And I run and everything else. And, and so I'm not saying this, you know anything to take seriously if you're you know elderly protect yourself all you can do but I'm not shutting people down for months on end again that's just wrong and I don't know we're not doing that so the rules of the game have changed and I'm thankful that the people of Pennsylvania put it back in the legislature's hands to end this thing I mean 21 days is enough if, you, if it goes on more than that then it should be voted on by us. Can so, you yeah. extend it another 21 or is that? Yeah, you can extend it however long you want. What I'm saying is, can he keep throwing the 21 no. days? No. One time. I mean, we never had it litigated yet, but I think it's one time for that issue and that's it. What if it comes from the federal Well, they haven't done that yet, but I, I can tell you that uh, okay. there would be challenges to that because the police powers, and according to the Constitution, remain with the States. Yes. No, I, I agree with you. I just thought, yeah. Yes. I, yes. Uh, I, yeah. I, I, well, I don't trust the government either. So, and I have so much in you. So, anyhow, so, um, uh, so that's how the code is. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, and, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, and as far, I'll just briefly cover the other one real quick since everybody's sort of ready and stuff. Um, I, I can only control what happens in Harrisburg, and even then I can't really control what happens, even though, sorry, but I, it's, a nut, it's a nut house down there. Um, I would say talk to your federal people about federal business. I, I really don't have control of what's going on in D.C. Do you think there's more people like you that are standing up for the constitutional rights? Instead there's some of, of us. Instead of just what has always been, or... Like you said, they tried to tell you get line and, and yeah, you know. There's some of us. There's not enough of us. Right. Yeah. I so I would say that. But to wrap it all up here, what you said about voting, yeah. you all voted, and you can encourage your friends elsewhere to vote, and elect more people that stand up for the constitution yeah. and so forth. Because I'm telling you, nothing is more powerful than that ballot box. Politicians know it, even if they don't admit it. Yeah. So thank you. 
the end of the day, someone joked with me. I'll wrap it up with this. They joked, oh, look at this. You're clerk home county famous now. And I said, yep, in two years, I cannot be, too. <laughs> the people, true. at the end of the day, will decide. Yeah. So all we appreciate vote. You. I encourage you to yeah. vote, vote, vote. Yep. Regardless of how you're voting, vote. It's the most important thing you can do. School so. districts, everything. Yep, the school district. This, this term. We want this job out of the schools. Yep. We want this Thank you, Honorable State Representative Dallas Kephart for the coffee and conversation at the Vicaria Township Building in Utahville, Pennsylvania. Your presentation helped all of us to confidently know you. The event caused us all to trust you for our future. All rights reserved for individuals present. August 31st 2023